And we look forward to the class tonight. Thank you very much, Brian. And uh, good evening to everyone. It's great to be back. And uh, Michelle, thanks for reading that not a little while ago, I was fellowshipping with Delonda and Terry at the beginning. Um, and didn't even realize this was the Delonda who had gone through so much. Uh, so sister, our prayers are with you. Thank you for showing that strength and even giving now, you know, and uh, coming and encouraging others even during this time. So uh, it's really, really great to see the kind of support you've received and the reminder of the great global family that we're a part of. So we're on to pillar number four. And um, I guess we're halfway through our series so far and really has continued to be my privilege to spend this time together with you. And you know, when, when, you, when you're reading God's word, whether it is you're, you're doing your own study or you're teaching it to others, you really get reminders that God's word is God's word and we are human, let me tell you. I just found that, <laughs> let, let, let me put it this way, preparing to teach on this purity pillar, which by the way has to do more with purity of heart and its impact on our speech. Um, I have, I'm reminded of how much I'm on the journey uh, towards this and I guess I'll, I'll share some more as the evening progresses. So, Here's where we begin, out of the overflow. I think we would agree that there's an interconnected reality when we think about our hearts and our tongues. Hearts and tongues are connected. One flows from the other, it's a natural outpouring. And I think it's a good place for us to be able to start because we are always speaking in one way or another conversation. You know, for those of us who are blessed to be able to speak and to hear, because that's not everybody's reality. We're always in conversation. So speech is something that we could even take for granted because we do it so often, but we're always talking, we're always communicating. And my hope tonight, as we look at the purity pillar, is that we're able to slow down a bit and be reminded of what is the backdrop, what leads to the type of speech and communication that we have. So I want to start with, with the heart. Proverbs 20 verse 9 says, Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without Sin. It's one of those rhetorical questions posed in the Proverbs. And we're getting an invitation. The, the, the invitation is to examine our inner person deeply so that we can assess its state of cleanliness, its state of order, its state of purity. So the question is, have I kept my heart pure? Have I kept my heart clean. I think that's an ongoing journey. When you go just four verses earlier in the same chapter 20, the proverb says the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. You know, we're complex people as human beings. What goes on within? There's so much. It's deep waters, yeah? And uh, I've never been anywhere close to scuba diving, anything like that before. I don't know if that's a major pastime in Florida, if, you know, when you, 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 you to go to the beaches or whatever. But maybe some of you guys have had the experience of going into deep waters. That could be scary, especially if you're going for the first time. So the purposes of the person's heart are deep waters. There's a lot that goes on within us. But there's an encouragement for those depths to be drawn out. And the proverb says, the person with insight can actually draw out from those depths of the human heart. Michelle Sanders, if I can please, 
invite you early to get some responses from the chat. My question is this, what can one person do to draw out the deeper things from another person's heart? What can one person do to draw the deeper things from another person's heart? Uh, Michelle, over to you to get some responses in the chat. Okay, got you. Thank you. Offer a listening ear, ask questions, ask questions, empathize and sympathize, ask questions unassumingly, vulnerably, share your own heart, no judgment, listen with heart, not just with ears, be vulnerable, ask point sincere, ask, ask pointed, sincere, open-ended questions, share experiences, provide a safe place, reassure, show compassion, active listening, coastal ignorers, being sympathetic. Cosi had prepared me a great meal and I'm all yours. <laughs> <laughs> And I love that. That sounds like somebody with West Indian roots, Michelle. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Create trust. <laughs> yeah. Be vulnerable. No judgment. I think that's it. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. What a what a wonderful range of responses. We started off with a few people talking about asking questions. A number of times we heard about being vulnerable, sharing personally from their heart asking pointed questions, creating a safe space. We heard empathy coming up a number of times. Then someone spoke about active listening as well. This, this is great. There's, there's an opportunity within our family, the family of believers, to help one another's hearts to do well by putting into practice the things that you guys mentioned a little while ago. And the connection I'm making is this. If we're doing well in our hearts, what is going to be the natural overflow? Our speech is going to be sound. Our speech is going to be wholesome. And our communication with one another is going to be godly. But before we can get to the godly speech, the wholesome speech, the uplifting speech, we must first deal with the heart. And so it's great to be able to hear the recommendations, the spiritual counsel of how we can help one another's hearts to do well, creating that safe space. Somebody else mentioned not judging. Yeah, just creating an, an, an environment where people can feel free. This is me, this is how I'm doing and there is no, no looking down, no, no, no comparison, you know? We just feel safe around one another. I think it's a wonderful reminder. And so as we think about the complexity of our hearts, I do want to encourage us. Let's, let's continue to be the type of family. Let's continue to grow in drawing out one another's hearts by our own vulnerability, humility, empathy, and active listening. Some great responses coming in. You know, Proverbs 18 verse 13 endorses some of the responses that came in a little while ago. It says, he who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. Answering before listening. Have you ever fallen into that trap before? Yeah. Or maybe you answer during the listening. The other person doesn't finish and we interrupt. Yeah. Yeah. The encouragement here is hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you speak, listen up. I actually find it quite convicting that the Proverbs would say it's actually foolishness to answer before listening. So this is a real test. I think of our love, our patience, and uh, even our humility. Um, the mistake I have made in, in, in my relationship with Michelle is sometimes in my zeal to help, I, I want to give an answer. So, Michelle, I want to answer from him. Michelle just wants to be able to talk. She's not looking for advice. She's not looking for counsel. And so I have to, I have to learn, I have to learn to, to temper that zeal, to want to give advice or to give, no, Tyrone, just listen. And, and sometimes that's all people need from us, uh, just, just a listening ear. 
So a couple of people mentioned this idea of listening, yeah, really, really helping to draw out the heart. And remember, that's our focus. Eh? We're looking at a, a pure heart that lead to clean speech. That's the purity that we're looking at. All right. On um, previous pillars, we actually looked at sexual integrity and sexual purity from a nobility perspective, from an integrity perspective. All right. But tonight we're, we're really, really looking at how the condition of our heart affects our speech. And we can help one another to have great hearts and ultimately great speech as well. Proverbs 14, verse 10. Maybe we can relate to this from time to time. Maybe we have gone through feeling like, yeah, I can relate to this passage. Each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. And that's where the listening air comes in, you know? That listening air, that brother or that sister who just kind of picks up and says, bro, is everything okay? You know, you have those people who just kind of know you well. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can't hide. <laughs> you can't cover it up. They just know you well. They can just, you, they, you know, sometimes people say we wear our hearts on our sleeve. Your heart not even on your sleeve. You just walk into the room and they know something is up. And sometimes they feel like, oh man, you got me. But sometimes we do need that because we, we, we go through difficult times. Sometimes our hearts are, are bitter and we feel like we're alone in that and having that person to help to draw out maybe there's bitterness in the heart because remember, if the heart is bitter, the speech will also be. And we want to be able to work in tandem with each other. I think this is a wonderful passage connecting heart and tongue. It's Proverbs 22, 11. It says, one who loves a pure heart and speaks with grace will have the king for a friend. It's a powerful combination. Eh? Those who can keep a clean heart and practice gracious speech, what will happen? You will draw others to you, including people of influence. Including people of influence. Speaking with grace is attractive. So when you put the two together, loving a pure heart and speaking with grace, it's a powerful combination. So let's journey towards becoming these type of men and women where purity of heart is coupled with gracious speech. Being able to know what is fitting, what's the right word to say at a particular point in time. So I want to be able to, to just give a, a thought here that the heart is the engine that propels the tongue. I don't know if tonight there's anybody, you know, as we study together, who feels like, Tyrone, <laughs> see my tongue? That's my weak point, you know. <laughs> it gets me into trouble all the time. Let me encourage you. Don't try and change your speech. <laughs> Work on the heart, <laughs> not the speech. Because if I start thinking, well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me change my words. Let me change my language. Changing the language isn't going to solve it. If we change the condition of the heart, the speech will flow. So we have to be able to figure out, why is it my tongue is my weakness? Is there something going on in my heart? that I haven't dealt with, yeah? The heart is the engine that propels the tongue. Proverbs 16 verse 21, similar to Proverbs 22, 11, the wise in heart are called discerning and gracious words promote instruction. So now we're looking at wisdom in the heart coupled with gracious words promoting instruction. It's, it's a recipe for growth and wisdom and the ability to pass on wisdom to others. See, it takes discernment to know what to say and when to say it. And wisdom and mature reflection are needed to speak instructive words of guidance. Yeah? What to say and when to say it. You, you think about some of these stories in the Gospels. Haven't you ever just kind of smiled to yourself 
when you see either the Pharisees or the Sadducees coming after Jesus, question after question, and then the gospel writer will just stop and say, after this, they no longer ask them any questions. You ever notice that? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we try to trap him. We try to ask him all kinds of different things, and he just knew exactly what to say and when to say it. And it's like, let's just leave. <laughs> we can't win with this guy. It's the beauty of gracious words. It's the beauty of having that kind of discernment. Allow me, if I could, just to kind of envision maybe a bit of a, of a chart. Yes, we're trying to arrive at words of grace. But I think that there's some, there's some prior stages before that. I want to suggest that before we can get to gracious words, we have to have some emotional management. we got to figure out how am I doing emotionally. Slow down a little bit. Then I also think there needs to be some mental discipline. We've got to discipline our thoughts. What's going on in my head? Where, where is my head space right now? Before I open my mouth, how am I doing emotionally? What are the thoughts that I'm thinking? And then in addition to that, we move towards a purification of the heart. Is there anything that's going on within me that I haven't dealt with yet? So if we combine managing our emotions, disciplining our thoughts, and purifying our hearts, I think that puts us in a great position to have words of grace. Guys, let me be open with you all. It's one of the things I love about us being family. I don't have to try and pretend to be spiritual. <laughs> I can talk and let you all know, hey, you see this? This purity thing that we're talking about here, I am working on it, you know. Just um, just this weekend gone, I was part of a planning meeting, you know, and, and I'm not going to be deliberately vague for you to try and figure out, was it a planning meeting at work or was it at church? Let me just tell you, it was a planning meeting for church, okay? And, um, you know, trying to set some things up for, 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 for 2022. And... Uh, um, I had an opportunity to speak about something which I thought was an area for, for change. Some observations I was making and then, you know, um, getting the opportunity to read different books. And, um, and you know that goes sometimes you read a book and you feel like everybody needs to stop what they're doing and just read that same book. <laughs> so you can get a little overzealous. <laughs> so because I like reading, I think I go through that challenge from time to time. Just want everybody to just read everything. But, you know, what I didn't realize is that there were a lot of emotions that I was feeling at the time that I spoke. And um, I remember calling up a brother who I'm in a one another relationship with after the meeting. I said, bro, talk to me. <laughs> Tell me about my contribution to the meeting. He said, Tyron, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Now, you know when you're here, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you know, bro was thinking, hey, we need to talk, okay? <laughs> because I made some observations here. And um, he said, Tyron, here's what I think. I think there was too much passion. And he didn't say that in, as, as a compliment. He said, when, when you speak that way, you can come across angry. If you come across angry, people are going to tune you out. He said as well too, that wasn't it. You got to watch your timing. <laughs> what you had to share might have been good, but that wasn't the time. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so my tone was wrong. <laughs> my timing was wrong. <laughs> yeah, he said you needed to be more temperate. If you wanted to have a breakthrough, you needed to be more temperate in your delivery. So guys, you realize I just totally blew it, okay? <laughs> All right? I just totally, totally got it wrong. But, you know, when I, when I got a chance to really reflect, you know, he, he spoke about be careful when you speak passionately. He wasn't saying speaking passionately is wrong, you know. He said just be careful sometimes because you could be disguising anger. And it, it, it got me thinking about the fact that I was feeling some frustrations, yeah? 
I was feeling some frustrations and they were deep within. And you know what happened? It was as though I was waiting for a chance to get to contribute because he said to me, when you speak like that, you also sound as though you came with an agenda. Yeah? So guys, let me just, let me be honest with you all. It was very, very challenging preparing today's lesson, okay? Because I feel like, I feel like I'm coming to you all today. And look, I'm always coming to you all as a broken vessel, but I just feel like my example this week is like tiring of all of the weeks to get it wrong with your speech. Is this one, boy? <laughs> but amen, so be it. I don't have to try and look good before you. Like I need to be honest about how I'm doing. And um, I think God allowed me to be able to see that I had some frustrations that I hadn't dealt with. And, um, and also I just needed to be able to step back a bit you know, step back, step back a bit, Tyrone, and uh, understand that the desire that you have to help and make a contribution, there's a time and a place. And especially because it has to do with church, I have to remember, <laughs> you know, First Corinthians says, you know, Paul and Apollos, they're nothing. God is the one who gives the growth. It's all about him. So I have to learn to not take myself too seriously. Yeah, you get to make a contribution, amen. But Tyrone, the, the, the life is going to go on. The show belongs to God, not to you. So I have to be able to learn to step back and um, just be a little bit more measured. But um, it wasn't about the speech first and foremost. It was what was going on emotionally in my mind and in my heart. Um, I encourage you to learn from my mistakes, all right, as we consider um, the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10, in this one chapter. So if you're thinking, what's one chapter I can go to and just see a bunch of passages dealing with the tongue? Proverbs 10 is one of them. And I've, I've, I've only highlighted the first half of the verse. Um, the Proverbs, as many of you all may know, is, is written, it's a form of Hebrew parallelism. And the type of parallelism in a lot of these passages in chapter 10, it's what they call antithetical. So the first line tells you it, it, it makes a point and then the second line makes the same point by by talking about the opposite so the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life but the mouth of the wicked so you know by by doing the by showing the opposites you get to reinforce the point but i've only highlighted the first half of these verses proverbs 10 11 the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life visualize a fountain visualize water gushing Visualize refreshing someone. Your speech has the capacity to refresh others. Proverbs 10 verse 20, part A. The tongue of the righteous is choice, silver, value. Yes, what you see can be precious in the eyes of the person who's hearing you. Proverbs 10 verse 21. The lips of the righteous nourish many. You can be fed. Yes? Or you can feed others by your words. Imagine you and a brother, you and a sister, you all decide, hey, hey let's meet up over lunch. And by the time you finish talk, they are so filled with encouragement. They forgot that they didn't even eat yet. <laughs> they're just so, they're, they're so filled. They're so built up. This is the power a speech. And then it says here as well, from the mouth of the righteous comes the fruit of wisdom. Take a look at these words, fountain of life, choice silver, nourishing many, fruit of wisdom. Do you realize the, the power that you have with your speech? And maybe you might be thinking, Tyrone, you don't know my, my, my mouth gets me into trouble. I want you to be encouraged. That very mouth can be life-giving to others. It's possible. It's, it's within our grasp. Yeah? So don't feel like, you know, man, for me to not be in trouble, I have to keep quiet. Look, there's a time for us to measure our words, but, but, but think about the promises here and the capacity we have to build others up with our speech. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity that God has given us.
Michelle, here's my next question. I'd like to get some responses again. Okay. Why does walking closely with God assist us in having a righteous tongue? Is there any connection between our walk with God and the way that we speak? Over to you, Michelle. Okay. They're thinking. <laughs> They're measuring their speech. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking more of what God thinks. It's a remembrance of the pure of heart. He purifies our heart. It reminds me that God is right there with me. When our mind is filled with God's word, our words come out godly. Mm -hmm. um, Holy Spirit keeps us in check. We gain wisdom by learning from his example. His word cleanses us. Wow. Having God's me, mind, the Lord is near. Yes. God can speak on my behalf. So great. Thanks, Michelle. Some more came in again. Then the spirit guides us. It says the Lord is near. <clears throat> yeah. From the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. <clears throat> Being in the presence of God, he fills us up so our words are joyful. Mm. Jesus sets the, sets the example and we try to follow. So some great thoughts again. Um, it humbles our thinking and position. Our mind is renewed with his spirit. Wonderful. We've, we've got some contributions here talking about the role that the spirit plays in directing our speech. Um, a couple of people spoke about filling ourselves with the presence of God or surrounding ourselves with the presence of God, filling ourselves with his word so that as we fill ourselves with his word naturally, you know, our speech becomes great as well. It becomes godly as well, too. Um, it's, it's wonderful. There's a, as we depend on God, and somebody else also spoke about following his example. And, and I think that's a, a great segue for this particular passage. Because God is the source. Proverbs 2, verse 6 and 7 says, For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If God is the source of wisdom, as the brothers and sisters were saying, and we walk closely with him, we give ourselves a chance to be like him, to speak words of wisdom, to speak words of knowledge, to speak words of understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He's a shield to those whose walk is blameless. So God is the source of wisdom. He's the source from his mouth. Yeah. So God is the perfect example of that triad, that wonderful triad of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We look to him, we walk with him, and we can become like him in our speech. Great responses. Thanks, Michelle. Proverbs 20, verse 15. So we had a couple of passages in Proverbs 10. We have some in Proverbs 20 as well. Easy to remember. 10 by 2 is 20. God, gold there is, and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. A jewel, a rare jewel. Words that speak knowledge. The Proverbs, is, it, 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 it describes the person who's able to speak with knowledge as, as a gem that is hard to find. That's, that's a, it's, it's a wonderful image of how special this gift of, 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 of wholesome speech is. In similar language, Proverbs 25, 11, the older NIV says, a word aptly spoken is like apples of gold and settings of silver. Yeah? So silver is precious. It's wonderful. But then you put some gold among it, and it shines brightly. Yeah? Among the silver. That is a word aptly spoken. Just knowing exactly what needs to be said at that particular point in time. So let's close off tonight by talking about six tips to tame the tongue. Brian, let me hear you say that five times quickly. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, maybe if it was three tips, there's three tips to tame the tongue. That would be what we call it, alliteration, too many T's. <laughs> yeah. So let's close off with some tips to tame the tongue. Number one, honesty is the best policy. Proverbs 27 verse 5, what does it say? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. But this open rebuke, um, honesty, openness, yeah? That's, that's, that's the better option, all right, than, than hidden love. And I've, I've made the point, eh? 
Um, I think we, and look, I'm, I, I, I must confess, I haven't gone and done a, a, a check of the Hebrew word for rebuke or even the English dictionary. I don't know if rebuke always has to be loud or harsh. Sometimes I wonder if rebuke more has to do with the content than the volume at which we speak, yeah. Um, but I think the principle here is openness and honesty, yeah, um, rather than hiding how you're feeling. Number two, watch your mouth. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. So there, there are times when we really have to stop and think, I, I really need to guard my speech here. Um, it does have the impact of preserving my life. So watching what we say. And I don't know if in, in, in Orlando, definitely in the Caribbean, when you hear your parents say, watch your mouth, you take that seriously. <laughs> you take that seriously, yeah? All right, then not much needs to happen after you hear, watch your mouth. <laughs> All right, we know exactly what time it is. Tip number three, choose gentleness. Through patience, a ruler can be persuaded and a gentle tongue can break a bone. And you know, this, this passage convicts me as I think about uh, what I shared happened over the weekend, that um, my, my speech wasn't gentle. It was potentially offensive and potentially putting people on the defensive. And some of the frustrations in my heart is coming from a lack of patience, you know, wanting to make a recommendation, but not having the patience to wait you know, um, to wait on God's timing rather than my own personal agenda. So a gentle tongue has real impact when it comes to being persuasive. Number four, less is more. When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. So brothers and sisters, stop exactly what you're doing right now. Try and hold your tongue and speak at the same time. Good luck. <laughs> Not going to happen. And I don't know if when the Proverbs were written in the original context, they had that in view. But when you literally try to hold your tongue, you can't talk. <laughs> yeah? So there's a great admonition here to, to, you know, less is more. Sometimes in a given situation, our contribution needs to be short and succinct. You don't have to be long-winded to make the point. And I'm preaching to myself here, <laughs> mm -hmm. all right? Uh, because when I, re when I think back to the weekend gone by, I think if I had spoken once, all the way over there. Yeah. <laughs> rather than twice, then um, I think things would have gone better. Number five, avoid gossip. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's in most parts. It's the thing about gossip, eh? gossip is very juicy and very tasty, but very destructive. It's something we need to stay far away from. And um, let's, let's not excuse ourselves and disguise ourselves with all kinds of nice sounding things. Well, you know, well, you know, I just wanted to get some advice from a spiritual brother or sister. And um, so let me just kind of talk about this other person's situation. No, I think we've, we've, we've matured over the years, I believe. And I'm um, really coming to understand the need to, um, to be reliable and trustworthy when it comes to how we speak about other people. And what I'm learning is it's better to speak to people rather than about them. You know, let me not speak about somebody behind their back. Go straight to the person, speak to them rather than about them. And finally, maintaining confidentiality. If you take your neighbor to court, do not betray another's confidence. It's a very convicting passage. And um, the, the idea that I'm, I'm getting here is that, you know, you, you and somebody are working something out. That's between the two of you. Don't bring in somebody else's confidence. A third party shared something with you. Why are you bringing that into your conversation with brother X or sister X? Keep that out. Respect the other person's confidentiality. All right. And, um, and maybe we have learned as well over the years, the only lessons I had to learn is, you know, if somebody shared something with me and they wanted to get some counsel, I've had to learn from my mistakes and say, you know what? Before I go to somebody else who I think might be better equipped, I'm asking permission, bro. Yeah, this thing you spoke to me about, it's a little bit beyond me. Are you okay? Are you okay if I give Brian a call? 
I want to talk to Brian about this. Brian has some, some experience in this particular area. I think he'd be able to give some good input. I should not just assume because Brian Sandos is a spiritual man, I can just go and start talking about the brother's um, stuff. Should really find out from him first. Are you okay with it? Bro, yeah, man, no problem. You know, I trust Brian. Brian has my, my interest at heart. Go ahead. You know, you can talk to him about it, but don't assume because we're going to somebody spiritual that it's okay to betray our confidence. Um, we could inadvertently do some damage um, if we're not careful in that area. So again, I really believe it's probably one of those areas we've we've grown in as a global family. So I close with this. Brian has these questions already. Two questions for our breakout groups. Number one, in which relationships are you most tempted to speak hastily or rashly without first weighing your words? There may be times that, you know, there's this one relationship in particular is like, oh gosh, boy. And things just keep coming out, just, you know, maybe there's a particular area of vulnerability. Um, so perhaps that's a relationship to pray about and really pay attention to. Secondly, have you been in the habit of going beneath the surface of your heart by allowing others in? Or are you tempted to be closed up and fearful of exposing those debts? Are there people who want to ask questions out of a genuine interest and you're, you know, more likely to be closed up? Or are you willing to have those deeper things exposed and brought to the light um, because you know of the, the 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 nature of the relationship. So these are our discussion questions. Let me stop sharing and hand back over to Brother Santos.